my, my hair is acting funny today. Um, as he, oh yeah, how are you? You well? You good? Um, I can't believe today. It's been um, quite um, an interesting day because it's the fifth anniversary of Prince's passing. Um, so I did a radio show um, that I kind of, I built it previously um, for Worldwide FM um, and also wrote an article for Vice, uh, which went live uh, a few hours ago and we were just fixing all of the typos and things that went on that. But if you want to check out any of the stuff to do with prints that um, I did today, um, just go to nerm.co.uk and uh, it's all up there. So this week's guest on these, uh, these wonderful um, public therapy sessions um, is an incredible actor um, and someone that I've had the privilege of hanging out with in Bombay many times and I hope to do that again soon. His name is Denzel Smith and here he is. Hi Prithi, how are you? Hi Simbad, how's it going bruv? Uh, lovely seeing you pop up. Um, let's see if Denzel's internet connection works. Yo! Hello sir. Yo, here we are. Ah, oh, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can. Finally. Awesome, 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 yeah. awesome. Yeah, thanks for the delay. It's just been a crazy, crazy, crazy day. Thanks for, thanks for bearing with me. Yeah, statutory uh, uh, announcement. Uh, please, everybody. Uh, it was Nerm who was late, not me. <laughs> it was me. It was clearly me. It's, just, it's been such a... I can't believe the day. It's, it's, it's insane. So obviously, it's, print, it's the anniversary of Prince's death today. Uh, it's been yes. five years since he passed away. Hence all the regalia, the various um, yep. Yep. princely yep. faces and, and stuff. Like oh, that's, you're just flattering me now, bruv. Hang on, aren't you, aren't you happily in a relationship? Why are you trying it all with me, weird boy? Nah, I'm not coming on with you. I'm just telling you the facts. I uh, there, bastard. But yeah. You, um, are, you, you do resemble quite a bit of Prince. That's, yeah. well, I, I think, you know, it's like... Um, I'm sure I guess, many people have told you that. Um, I, only when they're drunk and then their eyes are a bit like... <laughs> well, I haven't had a somewhat. drink. Yeah, look, you have not? Ah, well, I've started for both of us. So there you go. But hi, how are you? All well? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, all good, yeah. Mm. It's good. Uh, the, we are living in some unprecedented times, so yeah, uh, it's all uh, really uh, messy, but uh, one has to keep one shit above the nose. Yes, I indeed. Mean, I mean, below the nose. You don't want shit above your nose, below nose the, on your forehead. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the mind of the slip is no tongue of the fault. <laughs> you must be fucking hilarious on set to hang out with, bruv. I can't no, like not that. Really, not really. I'm, I'm quite a serious guy, actually. Really? That's not the Denzel yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, I'm very serious, yeah. Ah. Oh, hi, hi, Smitha. Thank you for joining us in the comments. Big up. And also, anyone watching, if you've got any questions for Denzel, um, there's a little questions button. Um, write me a question and I'll ask him. Um, hi, Hitan. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Um, and, you know, the, the interesting thing is, is, I was thinking back to how we met which is a heck of a story. And I can't remember whether this was the night we met, which was, there was an after party at your house from a literary festival. I, I think so. It was that- But did we meet before, before that night? Uh, we, I think we met uh, before that night too, with our common friends, Jeet and Anil. Of course, the Babas, the, band, the Bandra, the Bandra Babas. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the, so Bandra is an area in Bombay, which is like a suburb. And Denzel, Jeet and Anil, big up Anil, I just saw him pop up. How's it going, bruv? Um, were kind of like the original gangsters of the area. Like that was just, it, it, it's something like, you know, <laughs> if anyone thinks that I am outrageous, these three chaps are the high watermark to live up to, for sure. Uh, no, I don't know about that, but we did our fair shit... Uh... And we did a fair bit of living mm. uh, in them days, you know. Absolutely. And it was quite an insight into, into the world of Bombay many years ago through yourselves. And then that night, and big up Carissa, who's in the comments, that night um, was fascinating because I, I met up with Jeet at this literary festival. Um, and then we ended up going back to yours with like Hanif Qureshi and uh, William Dalrymple and a whole host of other people. <laughs> Yeah, that was that was quite a night and quite a legendary night. Actually. It was yeah. chaos. It was utter yeah. chaos. <laughs> Wasn't there a fight or something? Something broke out in your house. Uh, like something went down. Yes, the less said about it, the better. Okay, fair uh, enough. Fair uh, enough. Fair uh, enough. 
But that was that was an incredible night. And and I think that, you know, you're amongst my friends that that is in a different creative field. Um and that, you know, I'm I'm good friends with, I've gone out and got fucked up with, but I'd know nothing about their careers. I know like I haven't read a single one of William's books. I've barely only read Narcopolis from um from Jeep. I haven't touched any of the new stuff because I just I, I'm not emotionally prepared to go into the dark side as yet. Um <laughs> But his new one does look wicked. But you, like, popped up in Tenet, of all fucking things, which is pretty spectacular. Yeah, it was quite an experience working with uh, Mr. Nolan. Uh, he's quite a dude. Mm. Yeah, yeah and, and he has this, um, this whole uh, nexus between time, space, and reality, which he explores beautifully, you know, as you know, in all his films. Yeah. So it was quite, a, quite, a, quite an experience working uh, with him there. Was it like, I mean, I guess that you shot in Bombay, right? Obviously, you didn't go anywhere This else. portion was, it was shot over six countries. Yeah. All the, the film, but uh, this is the portion in which I, I featured uh, my scene with uh, uh, Miss Kapadia. Uh, was, Big up Dimple, uh, a, another OG, another original yeah. gangster. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was shot in Bombay. Yeah, it was mm. shot in Breach Camp in a high rise there. On yeah. the 29th floor of the building, yeah. It's gotta, I, I've got to say that you were only in the film for a bit, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, he's not, the, he's not the arms dealer. Shit! And I was just devastated for you. Did that, did that <laughs> fuck you off at all, that it was like a, a role that you were on the screen for for just that amount of time? Yeah, no, it was from the beginning. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was just that much amount of screen time. It was, that was what was originally written in the script. Mm. And, of course, it was a Nolan film, and I couldn't say no to that. Yeah, you know. absolutely. And is it true that he's a complete bastard on set and he won't let anyone sit down? Uh, let's say he's very businesslike and he's very, yes, he's very on the ball. Yeah. Yeah, and he's very focused and intense on the set. So it's not, it's not like a fun environment. It's very, very concentrated. It's business. It's serious business, yeah. It's mm. concentrated work, yeah. Yeah. That's mad. And then also, yeah. another Western film that people would assume you in was the first exotic Marigold Hotel. The best example. The best Marigold. fucking hell. Look how terrible I am with yeah. all of my friends' work. So yeah, that, sorry. Was, that was wonderful. Working with John Madden was fantastic. And all the, 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 the who's who of uh, uh, the royalty of British uh, cinema and theatre. You know, it was amazing. It was amazing. And then I also did the second one, which was called The Second Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Of what course, a great name for a sequel. Yeah, and meeting... Uh, and working with, uh, you know, Bill Nighy and, and Dame Judy Dench and Dame Maggie Smith and, you know, all of them uh, was, was absolutely fabulous. Yeah. And as a second, uh, the, also meeting uh, on the second one, we had uh, Richard Gere. Oh. It was a pleasure working with him and discussing Buddhism with him. He's a great Buddhist. Yeah. And uh, it was it was quite a quite an experience, especially working with John Madden, who's a darling director. Such a lovely director, one of the finest I've worked with. Did yeah. you find, do you find that, um, I mean, not with Tenet, because that wasn't a very typical kind of thing, but you've also appeared in like, um, oh, fuck, what was, the, what was that sort of, the, the, the period drama that you were in? Um, uh, Beach and House. The Viceroy's House. Viceroy's House, yeah. That's the one. Because you that played Jinnah in that, right? Yes, I played Jinnah in that. And then that was also, that was quite a, quite a challenge actually because I I was given just 32 days and I had to lose a lot of weight so I had to lose about 15 kilos as you know uh, Jinnah was a lean and mean man I Very always thin. thought you were lean and mean uh, no he was much thinner than I was oh okay so really really lanky and tall uh, about my height uh -huh. so uh, you know uh, uh, it was, uh, and, and I did, I had to research it because, see, Jinnah has been demonized in this part of the world, mm -hmm. you know. So I had to, uh, if I had to find uh, his his uh, voice, as it were, uh, he was a brilliant man and um, I had to be true to him. I had to research all sides and look at all sides of the story. Did you uh, get, did you get any backlash in India from playing that role? Not really, not okay. really. I didn't. Yeah, that's good because I, 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 I can imagine that the the right elements of India would have latched onto that potentially. Yeah, they would have. 
Yeah, but I don't think the the film was viewed that wide, wi widely because uh, one is that they changed the title of the film and they launched okay. it here. And what it was, was it called, called there? 1947. Okay. Yeah, uh, all over the world it's called Viceroy's House and in India it was called Partition 1947 and it was dubbed in Hindi. And uh, uh, so it, it, I don't know why it, it wasn't uh, viewed in cinemas, but it, mm. it, it has been seen on uh, the OTT platforms. It's on mm. Netflix mm. right now. Yeah, yeah. And then very excitingly, Delhi Crime, which did a smashing, Delhi smashing round. Fabulous. Yeah, that's another fabulous director. You've got to watch out for his next work, uh, Richie Mehta. Uh, fabulous director who lives in your town right now. Uh, oh, really? Much. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to have to get drunk with him and get him on these as well. Yeah, he, he's, he's a fabulous director who, who took five years to research the, the uh, research uh, this whole story. Mm. You know? uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a sad story, actually. It's horrific is what it is. Yeah, It's totally. a horrific story. But the way he told it, uh, without uh, exposing any gory details, there was nothing gory on screen at all. But mm. yet it was so involving and so gripping. Mm. Yeah, because it was real. And he, 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 he made sure it was real. And he, he took a lot of time to talk to people and interview. He got them all spot on. Yeah. And so I, I, guess, I, I guess with that, you can't really fuck about with a subject that's so, like, so important. You know, there's, there's no real... Yeah. I mean, I, I imagine actually finding artistic license in a story about Nirbhaya is really, like, you don't want to do that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's also such a, it's so ironic that uh, a story such as, uh, such, uh, such a tragedy as that had to win the Emmy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> ah, big up Apoorva. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you, you, you win uh, uh, the Emmy for a story. Yeah. And at the same time, it's such a sad story, mm. you know? Yeah, it's not it doesn't really feel celebratory, does it? That's the thing. Yeah, it, it, it yeah, it, it's gripping. It's a gripping story, mm. but it's, it's unfortunate too. It is quite an unfortunate story. Well made, though. Well, I was going to actually ask you about the differences between sort of like the Indian film industry and uh, Western productions because you've experienced both. Yeah, and, and going on set, um, and like go, you know, going on set in a lot of Indian films, the the production seems a lot more like rawer and a lot more um from the hip um whereas mm. the or, or a lot more unregulated than here it's a bit more wild west i would say um you know, let's say the, the ways of working are different uh the systems are different uh the the the, the you know in 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 the western world uh uh in hollywood and british cinema people spend a lot of time planning and, you know, pre-production time is, is duly spent mm -hmm. and everything is worked out carefully. In India, <laughs> that is uh, sometimes, uh, it, it, is, uh, it takes uh, one month to plan a film and one year to shoot it. Whereas in the West, it takes one year to plan a film and one month to shoot it. <laughs> sure. It's the <laughs> inverse. Know. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Vicky's so, been Vicky's been popping up as a question. Sorry, please continue. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, yes, uh, somebody just I saw another question. Uh, Denzel Smith is my real name. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm an yeah, I'm an oddity from India <laughs> with a surname and yes, Smith without a P. <laughs> Smith without a P. That joke's just gone over my head, bro. You have to explain it to me. I'm sorry. Smith P S my T H Woodhouse. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. <laughs> Fucking hell, bruv. I mean, like, crikey. I mean, yeah, of course, just show my ignorance. Thanks, bruv. Really appreciate that. Cheers. I know saying you're lying. But yeah, Vicky Cash has been messaging and, and asking this relentlessly. What are your thoughts on Amitabh Bachchan and Shurik Khan as actors? Um, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, they're... They're, they're, uh, they're, uh, they're stars. actors. <laughs> they're stars. <laughs> and, um, yeah... I worked with Amitabh Bachchan in a film called Ek Aksnubi, if you saw that. I, I, you know what, I've, uh, I've only really seen like the classics from Indian cinema, like Shri Chasso Vis, Mogli Azam, that's, that's about it. I haven't really seen much else outside of mm. it. And that's why I'm kind of glad that OTT platforms are showing things like Delhi Crime, 
and you know yep. things like that that are that are really well made Indian productions. Mm. And that's kind of that's kind of exciting to see that quality kind of overriding. Yeah, the kind you, know, of, you know, you know, one thing that is that is uh, that's great. Like you know, there's this this is OTT platform that brought the world together and all world. Uh, cinema uh, together you know mm. it's it's sort of bringing the world together people from across like you, in india you can sit and watch a, a beautiful brazilian film or an iranian film or a french series or you know and vice versa you know uh, indian stuff uh, reaches out to many people across longitudes and latitudes uh, this is a great thing about ott yeah? and as a result of which uh, the content is uh, in indian at least from the indian point of view has changed Mm. And there is a lot more uh, interesting stuff coming out, let's say. And I guess yeah. because it's international, there's more like, I guess you've got more competition, so you have to level up. You have to up the game, yeah. You have yeah. to up the game. And I guess yeah. also because they're in all these territories, production companies want a big hit from India because that's a huge fucking market as well, right? You want yeah. to have a program like that because there's an audience there that they want to get. Yeah, yeah. There is, there is. Uh, and Indians are all over the world, yeah. We're the, you know, I think uh, one in ten, I think, or maybe. Really? So uh, that many of us? Yeah, yeah. There's quite a lot of them. Yeah. What? What? One in ten yeah. people in the planet? Yeah, I think so. Uh, what? Yeah. I'm I'm googling yeah. this, bro. I'm fact checking you right now. <laughs> one in ten people is Indian. You sound like a fucking uncle. Just like, ha, huh, Shakespeare, <laughs> Indian. You know that goodness gracious me sketch? Like <laughs> everything is Indian. Was Indian. By Shakespeare, the way, you know, Shakespeare was Indian. Like how Indians claim, yeah, his name was Sheshapa Ayer. Sheshapa Ayer, Sheshapa Ayer, Sheshapa Ayer, which is South India. Sheshapa Ayer became slowly over the years, became Shakespeare. And he anglicized it when he was there. So Shakespeare was also Indian. <laughs> and you know the other one? The other one is that Elvis Presley was Indian. You know what his real name was? What? Amal Shakap. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amal Shakap was Elvis's real name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, again, let me just check this. I don't, I, I don't, there's no, there's not a stat that I can pull up. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no. I literally. <laughs> it's one in five or? Dude, the stat that the WHO says that one in 10 people worldwide may have been infected by COVID. I'm like, okay, that's not the stat <laughs> I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> that we do not want. I mean, to know. exactly. What's the, um, I can't, I, I can't put it up. One in 10 people is Indian. Um, and 17% of the world is Indian. So you were, you were not far off, dude. Not far off, right. One in not seven, Apurva, yeah. One in seven are Indian. Yes, thank you, Apurva. Hang on. Is 70, my maths is shit. So what, 17% is not one in seven, is it? One in seven. That's what Apurva says. Yeah, but it, it says in this article, 17% of the world is Indian, but that doesn't equate to one in seven. That's one, one in 1.7. No, ten, yeah, one in 10 point. No, fuck. Wait. <laughs> I'm never good at math. Listen, so someone on this chat, if you're good at maths, tell us what it is, man. 17% of the world is Indian. What is that? Whoever it is, whoever it is, but uh, mm. there is an Indian in every corner of the planet. There's a lot of us, loads of us. Yeah. 1.7 in 10. There you go. Thank you very much. 1.7 in 10. There so you that's go. more than one. I said one in ten. You are correct. You are correct, sir. Yes. Yeah. And I'm also, my brain's completely fried over the last two days, I tell you. All this, this like, you know, you, I've been waiting for like a big project to come along or something interesting or a broadcast project or something. And then suddenly yeah. three come along at once. I'm just like, shit, I have to do everything simultaneously. Um, oh, so but bit. that's good, yeah, in these times to have work and to be busy is a good thing. That is yeah. very, 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 very true. Um, yeah. And also, uh, so I guess one point three six billion of seven point seven billion people. That's what Apurva says. Yeah. Ah. So that's one point three six out of seven point seven billion. That's a hell of a market. No wonder that. No wonder they're making yeah, good Indian that's content. That's a lot of people like me. Yes, Anil. Wow. What? Yeah. 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 I'm just. I'm, and also looking at your like looking at your IMDb page, you have a shitload of roles, bro. Talking about work and being lucky to have work. You look like yeah, you've been. Yeah, let's see. I've been. I've done my fair shit. Yeah, I've done my bit. Yeah, I have. Um, yeah, but there's there's always uh, more to be done. There's always uh, more levels to more more bridges to 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 
to cross and lots of good work to be done. So yeah, what, are the, nice. what, what other projects are there to do that you want to do? What's your sort of I, dream I, director I, or dream, dream I job? Come along. Yeah, I, I've got some ideas. I want to make a film on Bandra, for instance. You know, uh, a really quaint little film with um, the, the milieu I grew up in as a backdrop. That'd be Canada. amazing. Yeah. You know, Jeets and Anil and all my friends and, and the shit that we did then. You know, it was another world altogether. That was a Bombay of another time. And I, I'd like to recreate and capture that. Do you know, I have, I, have, I have been having these dreams about, like, going on tour again and missing flights and anxiety dreams about gigs and gigs fucking up and all these things. And there's a vivid memory I have of my first ever tour to India, like musical tour, like work tour in like 2000, mm. 2001. And yeah. um, it was in, it was in s summer. So I remember walking down, like, I think it was not Waterfield Road, but the, um, you know, the road that goes down to Palinaka, that road in Bandra, right? Mm. And, and it was in, it was in, yes, yeah, so it was 2001. And walking down that road, and it was just rain falling between the trees. Uh, and I remember sunlight sort of hitting the raindrops, but there being no fucking traffic. There was no cars. It was so quiet back then. Was it four o'clock in the morning? No, dude. It was like, it was sunlight. <laughs> no, no. It was actually, it was like in the middle of the day. It was like, it was shocking that it was so quiet. And then years later, obviously, going back to Bandra, you can't move for love or money. Do you know what I mean? It has to be four in the morning to get any free flowing traffic. Um, right. but, I just, like, but, you know, if you're saying Bandra of a different time back then, and my recollections yeah. only, go, only goes back to 2001. I can only... I mean, how the fuck are you going to shoot it? That's my question. <laughs> it's going to be super <laughs> quiet. How are you going to shoot in Bandra? That's the question. Oh, well, um, we'll have to do something. And, and this um, cranky Smee one would like to write it. I might just take you up on that. Ah. I, I don't know who this is, though. But... Uh, Anil, uh, Anil's, Anil's asking, like, asking for the drug stories. I'm like, nah, bruv. I don't think we can talk about this. I don't think we should go there. That's another... <laughs> that's like, that's like, that's like a, a five or six, like, news articles will pop up immediately. <laughs> it's terrible. Oh. Actually, that's the thing, right? So you've had, you know, you, you've worked in, like... Good to see you, Mary. Good to see you. You've worked in, like, in film yeah. over, the, like, in India and in, in the West. But... I mean, you're really, at the core of it, a theatre actor, no? I started with the theatre, yeah, I love the theatre, you know. Um, it's, uh, you know, like, it's, it's like, um, once you've tasted blood, yeah, if you're a manager, yeah, <laughs> it, it's like that. You, you, once you start with the theatre, and uh, you never can give it up, and I am very fond of the theatre, it's my first love. I try to get back to it whenever possible. Mm. Uh, and especially with film work. And, but as you know, all over the world, uh, theatre, you cannot live just by theatre. You have to do film work to survive. And I realised that uh, after a few years of devoting myself to theatre, that I had to do film. And so I got into film. And, and living in India, I had to get into the Hindi film industry. Mm. Uh, so that's, that's what happened. But I, I still return to the theatre whenever possible. It's a whole different scene, as I understand it, in India than it is over here. Like, over here as a Western actor, I imagine that you do your films, you do your sort of commercial stuff to make your money, you do your own projects, and then if you want to be taken really seriously, you do a bit of theatre. So you get your, you know, your, you, get, you walk the boards to get your first love, you know, in the papers and stuff and say, ah, there you go. And that, that sort of adds the credibility. Say, oh, he's an actor's actor. Yes, as well as being this star. Is that a similar no, sort of thing in India? No, for me, it's the reverse. I was started with the theatre, and I still return to it you know it's it a genuine a love not just as a yeah for me as a posture as i always say it's 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 um it's also therapeutic mm. yeah uh keeps the soul in order you know and i guess you, you know like i i think a few years ago i was talking to someone that set up i think there was raj kapoor's film academy or there was an acting academy or some sort of venue in um in Juhu, and they were talking about setting up something there. Um, and the brief outline they gave me about the theatre world in India is that it's really transient. There, is, there are no long runs, uh, essentially. Um, no, the concept of a run doesn't exist. No. Yeah. It's a Saturday-Sunday phenomenon, except for the Prithvi Theatre, who has shows every day. 
uh, every day of the week and people do patronize it. But otherwise, it's a Saturday, Sunday phenomenon. Yeah. Which so makes it no really hard person. to actually make any money, right? It, yeah, it makes it very hard. Uh, and you're, you know, you, you don't have one place. You, can, you, you cannot customize the theater for a particular show. When you have uh, big shows running in the West End or on Broadway, the theater is just booked for the whole year and that theater is customized. Mm. Yeah. And, or the and National. The I've seen some amazing set work at the National, just like shockingly yeah. elaborate sort of. Yeah, absolutely elaborate. And also performance wise and the quality of the production goes up, uh, you know, a few notches because it's honed every day. It's, it's like sharpening a pencil. And you want you're finicky about the point, mm. and so everything is like really sharp till it's final. You know, it's a really sharp point uh, because you're doing the same show over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here we go once, maybe sometimes once a month, right? After two months, you know, and then do a show. Maybe, maybe sometimes you you can do um, four shows because sometimes the theater group books at different venues. Uh, in a month, yeah, some Saturday here, then Sunday there, Monday here, Friday there, and uh, you get to do maybe five or six shows of the same place sometimes in a month. Mm. Uh, and that, that's going to be, I guess, you've got to really rely on like the talent of the individual actors, of course, but then also the casting to make sure that there's already pre existing chemistry. Because if you've got no time to develop that and hone it, you've got to just do it from the fucking like from, from the off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of it is like that. Yeah, a lot of it is from the hip. Yeah, and then regrouping sometimes after three months, you know, where you just have one or two rehearsals and then you you have to run the whole play again. <laughs> wow. So it's, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's quite a challenge. But yet it's very interesting and it's a lot of adrenaline, which makes I it work. And I guess also, it'd be so fucking boring if it wasn't challenging, right? You'd just be you'd like, why the fuck am I doing the same thing again just to earn a crust when I could do something challenging and, and expand yeah. your horizons and all that stuff? Have you ever acted no, on stage the, here? The, the, the issue is, why am I doing this when I can earn so much more money shooting a film or doing an ad or hosting a show on a Sunday? Yeah, when I'm getting 20, 30, 40 times, maybe 100 times more the amount of money. Yeah. Because India, you get peanuts for doing this, for doing the play. You've mentioned an ad. Weren't you in an advert where you had to do a fucking somersault or something? Yeah, that was a commercial I did. I just a... remember. <laughs> what was it for? An air conditioner? Yeah, it was called Daddy Cool. <laughs> that was it. Which actually dovetails with you perfectly because you're also a jazz fan. And I've seen you in your fucking jazz outfits with your hats and, and your shades. And yeah, you've got yeah, this. Yeah. You've got this daddy cool look about you, bruv. <laughs> For sure. Did I take that as a compliment? <laughs> yeah, 100%. You're dapper as fuck, bruv. 100%. Like, full gangster. Which is why it's so, it's, it's so nice talking to you and finding out about your craft as opposed to all the usual buckwass I just chew your ear off with, you know? It's, this is really, really interesting. But have you ever acted on stage over here? Yes, I have. I have actually performed in London, yeah. Hmm. I did a run uh, at the Peacock Theatre which is that LSE. Mm -hmm. uh, I, but I've done three runs there, you know, of a, of a show that was very popular all over Europe. And also in London, very much. it was called The Merchants of Bollywood. Oh, right. So it was still, it was still a Bollywood themed thing. It was a Bollywood thing. Yeah, there's yeah. there's got to be, you know what, there's got to be something about like, you know, <laughs> visas where, okay, if you're coming for a Bollywood production, we'll let you in. It's just like, fuck. In fact, that's, that's another question. Do you find that Western productions often sort of orientalize you a little bit? No, but I also come with Indian plays there. To the, okay. To, yeah, to... Um, uh, uh, what's that theater? The, I, I came with a play called Gohar Jan. I came with a play called Sammy, mm -hmm. all directed by Lilith Dubey. Okay, yeah. wicked. So, there, I mean, so like, like what I was getting at was that do you find... I don't know whether you call it typecasting or just straightforward oriental, orientalization of you being an Indian actor. Do you find that happens with the stuff you do in the West? Uh, um, I, I, I don't know whether I get typecast or what, but I've got, uh, I mean, I, I could be anything actually. You know, I'm, I'm not typically, 
I don't think I look typically Indian, neither do I look typically Western or, you know. So I, I get an array of roles mm. across the spectrum, yeah? That's fucking awesome. Yeah. But you've got this very distinctive voice, which I'm sure everyone talks about. This fucking, it's like dripping with honey. It's like, <laughs> or, or molasses. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. It's molasses. It, in the early days when I had no work in film, I, I survived by it. I used to do voiceovers and a, a lot of dubbings for feature films and stuff like that. I could see that, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I did a lot of that. It was uh, good money and uh, it helped pay the bills. You know. And so do you get voice casted? Not type casted, but voice cast. Voice cast, yeah, yeah. That's another ball game altogether. It's another art. Dubbing and uh, voiceovers uh, is, is another is another game altogether. Yeah. How so? What's the difference? Um, it's your face is uh, not seen. You just have to express with your voice. You know? So I've just got this <laughs> image of you in a vocal booth going, yeah, hey, I mean, I mean. <laughs> and making all these stupid faces because you can. <laughs> you know, in the early days, there were a lot of Russian and uh, that's before the wall came down. In a lot of East Bloc, East European countries, a lot of art cinema from there that uh, had a little bit of tit and ass, but they were great films. They all used to come to India to be dubbed in English and then re-exported. Really? Even, yeah, shown in small cities, you know, in India. What, just for the salaciousness of them or for the other? Yeah, did they have, did they have other artistic? Minutes. Okay. For those one or two minutes of that. No, but they were great films. Some okay, of them. so they, they had artistic merit. Films. It wasn't just like sort yeah, of... Yeah. Softcore they porn, were also re-exported, yeah. So they right. were dubbed here. They, were, they, they found it cheaper to dub it in India in English and re-export more. A lot of Eastern you know, Russian films, uh, you know, Bulgarian, Czech, you know, lots of those, that sort of uh, stuff. Mm. Great films. Wow. So I, used to, I started there, actually, dubbing those. Yeah, and, and in those days, it was the old <laughs> rock and roll system, you know. They, they didn't have uh, this electronic equipment, yeah. It was all on tape. Uh, yeah, it was all the, the you know, the, 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 it was spliced. The, the, the scenes were spliced and it was, ro it, it played over and over and recorded on optical. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, so you're recording digitally, but you were watching, how were you recording digitally back then? No, you were not re recording digitally. You how do you mean optical? Tape. Sorry, I misunderstood. Optical. Well, optical on an optical tape, the tape. Oh, so it just kept looping. Yeah, yeah, yeah the sound, uh, you know, the sound, the, the magnetic tape, sorry. Mm, mm -hmm, the magnetic yeah. tape, yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. And then I guess you'd have to splice the hey, film. Hey, Nadine. <laughs> Watch the film yeah. and then record the tape. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Because it, in film, the, the soundtrack runs separately, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they record it separately on, on those big fat magnetic tapes. Yeah. yeah, the reel to reel yeah. vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah proper that used masters. To be the old system, yeah. Rock and roll system, they call it. Nice, nice. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then, way, like, like, did you do the dubbing in English then? So you did the English sort of actual voicing. Like, did you, sorry, did you do the dubbing in English is my question. Fuck, my yeah, we not did working the, today. the dubbing in English, yes. And they didn't. There was no sort of Indian, sort of like Hindi dubbing for Indian market. No, no, there was I'm no Hindi guessing... dubbing. It was all dubbed in English so that they could go to other markets too. So I'm guessing that the, the, the TNA bits, the sort of, you know, the salacious bits weren't mm. for the Indian audience. Were for the Indian audience. Was it for the Indian audience? <laughs> yeah. So the, okay. Some films were released in small towns in India. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Shit. Was... What, what, they got through a censorship board? Like, how was that done back then? I... I have no idea, but uh, they, uh, I know I dubbed a lot of those kind of films. Now I've got other mental images of it, you in that vocal I'm booth doing very about, naughty things, yeah, you know what I'm saying? It, it, like, ah. the, in, in the late 80s, early 90s, you know? Wow. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. And then when did you, what was your first big break then? I kept doing theatre, quite a bit of theatre, and I, I continued with theatre. I, 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 I sort of trained with, uh, I went to NSD, you know, uh -huh. you know, NSD. Sorry, I thought you weren't going to talk about drugs. What? what? NSD. <laughs> 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 NSD, okay. NSD was, uh, yeah, the Nazi school of drama. 
Right. Okay. I mean, that's what I needed, man. I needed you to expand on that, on that little, um, that those three letters somewhat more than yeah. just saying them. Cause that does sound, um, you know, you know, but yeah, yes, please continue. Sir, I have done a, a production online during COVID. I did a play on Nehru. Uh, did you? With a, with a group. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was called letters to a daughter from prison. It's the oh. letters is a, yeah, Nehru wrote to Indira while he was in prison. Oh, the, uh, it's based on yeah. the book, Letters from My Father, right? Because I've got yeah, that book. Yeah, Letters to the, yeah, yeah, Letters. To... It's amazing, some of those letters are fabulous, yeah. yeah that's a good point, so, actually. Uh, where, where can we see it? Is it still online? Uh, the play is uh, at the moment not online, yeah. Okay. But we did have some live shows, yeah. Uh, and this was a, a collaboration with a a group from uh, San Francisco. It's called Enact Arts. It's a theater group from there. It was a co-production between their company and mine. Yeah. And you know, with, with voice, like going, just going back to your voiceover thing and like the difference where you can't express with your face, you have to express with your voice. Um, I imagine like just from my radio background, it's triggering all these things where you, where you want to get your point across with just your voice. Um, mm. I imagine they're quite similar in that respect. Yeah, yeah, it's very similar, actually. Yeah, but just that when you're doing it professionally for voiceovers, you have to study, uh, you know, personalities of microphones, et cetera, et cetera, how much to kiss the microphone, how mm. much not to kiss the microphone. Then there is, there is uh, how to handle pop, you know, uh, the plosives. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Et cetera, et cetera, yeah, the buzz, the buzz. Purr, and and purr. moving your head back. Yeah, moving your head back. Impact, yeah. yeah. That, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, shit. I'm just having all these flashbacks, yes. Yeah. And then, and, and, and when you're doing lip sync dubbing, when you're syncing for some you have to watch the uh, ah, buh, buh, the mouth open and match that. Can you lip uh, read? No, I can't lip read. Okay. Sometimes I can, yeah. When I'm dubbing, I can sort of make out what, if it's another language, how can I lip read, yeah. Of course, I, I just meant generally, because that's a skill you're that... usually dubbing from some other language into English mm. or Hindi. Yeah. Well, I mean, talking about, like, you've just, you've now reminded me of, like, you know, a combination of things like being South Asian, um, lip reading and stuff, and also OTT platforms now funding amazing content and films. Um, Riz's new film, uh, Sound of Metal, which is amazing on Amazon Prime. Riz Ahmed's new film. Yes, yes, for which he was, uh, I think he won. The no, he got nominated for an Oscar, which is this, yeah, this yeah, Sunday. Yeah. We'll find out if he's won or not. Hey, fingers yeah. crossed for the boy. But um, yeah, in that film, they go into spoilers, actually. Uh, yeah, it's bad deafness, I can tell you that. Yeah, we keep getting nervous um, and the stage fright is normal. I think that's okay to be, you know. Uh, but you can't let it overwhelm you. Mm. Uh, you get nervous. Everybody gets nervous. Every performer worth his salt gets nervous before they go on, I'm sure. No, you know that. Yeah. Honestly, I, I, yeah. You, it, if you're prepared and you know, you know your stuff, then it works to your advantage because you have that little edge in your performance. I, I, I often find that the nerves, like for example, I did this radio show today, um, which I haven't, I haven't done a radio show properly for years. It's been, it's been so long. And it was a Prince one, so I put it out. And I felt this wave of nerves on how the work's going to be received. You know, this is, this is all immediate. And I think I'm better with immediate stuff. So when I'm on live mm -hmm. radio or DJing or, or at a gig on stage, I find I can deal with that. I don't have the time to panic, in a way. Mm -hmm. As soon as the work's released or an album or yeah, a, yeah, a yeah, film, yeah. whatever, that's yeah. when I get nervous. Just like, oh, fuck, how is it? It's beyond, How's it's out it of my control. Be, uh, yeah. Right, How's it going right. to be received? What are people going to say about it? By the way, it? I didn't know Prince had so many names. He was also known as Jay. And uh, in his early days, he had different names. Jay? What? Yeah, he had many, many pseudonyms. He was called, I mean, okay, so Prince was called Skipper growing up. He hated the name Skipper. Prince. No, no, no. But then he released several albums under different names. He released, I mean, he produced work under different names for different artists, for sure. So there was like... Jamie Starr, there was, ah. uh, um, Jamie Starr was the pr producer behind, it was a pseudonym of his that he used to hide behind to answer, right, uh, right. to, to sort of release stuff. Yeah, um, Jamie Starr is the big one. Um, Camille is another one. Uh, many, many characters, yeah. He was, he was a bit like, I'll do this. But also, he's, you know, he, was, he played guitars secretly for Madonna. 
um, mm. played synth for Stevie Nicks secretly, like loads of shit. Like the guy would just what? kept kept doing all this stuff that no one ever knew about. So and stand back. There's a, there's a, there's, there is, there are hundreds and hundreds and hours of unreleased stuff that he has in his vaults. Yeah, for more than about maybe hundred albums out there. Oh, way more, way more, way, 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 way more. I mean, I just, I'll just show you something now. My desk's a mess, so forgive me. You see, there's this hard drive here with a Prince logo on it. And yeah. that has um, maybe two terabytes worth of print stuff on it. Um, mm -hmm. All sort of lots of unreleased stuff, bootlegs, all that kind of stuff. And there's more in the vaults that haven't been released yet. There's so much. It's insane. Um, so it's, it was quite hey, so cool. difficult to go through to make this show, which is why I'm so knackered and drained right now. I'm just like, ugh. So but you, yeah. You've got, you've got some of that unreleased stuff there on that? I've got loads of it. Yeah, two terabytes, bro. But how did you acquire it? Because the Prince fan network is, or the fam network, because um, is, uh, is pretty extensive. And I reckon there's so many points of being leaked, but you know, what Prince used to do was go into a recording studio, record onto tape in the olden days, and then ask for cassettes to be pressed up constantly. So he'd give out these cassettes left, right, and center to his inner circle, and then they'd get spread Whoa. out. Yeah. Whoa. So there's a story, you know, in Purple Rain, where... Um, where he makes the young girl jump into a lake to cleanse her, cleanse herself in the waters of Lake Minnetonka. Um, and Apollonia jumps in the lake. Um, she got kind of sick from that. So Prince recorded him playing uh, piano uh, onto a cassette and just gave it to her. And on that cassette was the working of like three or four new tracks and old tracks and stuff, just, just him noodling on a piano. Um, wow. so, so he just give tapes to his bodyguards and whatever of just unreleased stuff. And then eventually it gets collected. So yeah, wow. these are like those bootleg concerts, concerts recorded by uh, those uh, by the for the Grateful Dead concerts. Mm. Absolutely, and now thanks to digital, you know, media and stuff, there's a phone ban at his gigs before he died, obviously. Um, but everyone secretly recorded stuff. Everyone smuggled in recording devices and, and things like that. And it turns out, fuck, one of my one of my um, one of my friends who's also Anushka Shankar's sound engineer engineered Prince's shows in London. And I didn't know that he was the engineer and I could have fucking got in and got right amongst it, but I didn't. Big, big, right. big, big, big missed opportunity. But anyway, yeah. So in terms of the music you like, it's just jazz or does it expand out? No, it goes, I, I like music, period. Yeah. Because I've seen you at some gigs and I'm, just, I'm a bit like... I have a preference for jazz and jazz rock. And that sort of stuff, you know, R and B, and you know, so uh, I mean, it's I have a preference, but I listen to all kinds of music. But I was going to say, like, seeing you at one of my gigs was quite fascinating, and I don't know whether I'm misremembering this, but I think you were there with Jeet, um, and I was playing some some new bass heavy stuff, and I saw you dance, and I'm not sure whether <laughs> I'm misremembering this, but I was just like. Fuck, Denzel was dancing because I always yeah, have you as a very. I, I enjoy that sort of stuff too. Yeah. I but I always, I always picked you as a very stationary, sort of solid. I think this was at Zenzi many years ago, was it? Mm. I think, I think so. Yeah, I think it was. It must have been at Zenzi. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I don't say I've got to get Anjali Dutt one day. The thing is, I've got to, the one golden thread that links everyone I talk to on these chats is that they have seen me be a drunken asshole before. And so unless someone's, you know, if someone hasn't seen me be a drunken asshole, I can't speak to them. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all it is, man. That's, That's all it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. So what has the reaction been for you? Like, you, you've got this kind of level of notoriety, but you're not, like, mobbed in the streets. That's kind of a perfect sweet spot to be in, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I like my anonymity. Yeah? I try to maintain my anonymity. Um, and it's it's good to be that way and only people who really know your work approach you and um, that also feels good once in a way mm. and I'm glad I have my anonymity because I can just go anywhere and do whatever I like without being bothered it's kind of a superpower right you can just do what the fuck you want to and also yeah. make an ass out of yourself and no one's going to say anything it's great yeah absolutely yeah you know uh, so it's it's great yeah it's great um, I, I, I like that, and, and that's largely to do with uh, with various uh, uh, looks that I have, get-ups, as they say in Hindi cinema. Yeah, 
you know. So I I I change my appearance quite a bit sometimes in films. Oh, in films? I was going to say in real life, you don't at all. You look exactly <laughs> the fucking same as when I first met you. Like, what are you talking about? And in fact, you don't really, I mean, I, I, forgive me for saying this, but you've looked the same age ever since I first met you. Really? Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's just been like, okay, that's, that's just Denzel. Not that you've had, did you have gray hair when you first met? I can't remember. No, it's a recent requirement. A char. It's quite recent, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's it suits you for sure thank you yeah so what are the like post tenet like you've you've worked with nolan like i said and i asked you this before but i don't think you answered it um which is like any sort of directors you'd want to work with because once you've worked with nolan i mean who's who's left it's kind of fincher right like is the, is the other sort of equivalent see i i don't really go by directors i i who, who, who. I, I just look at scripts and see what suits me and you know if i Depends on what parts are offered to me, and accordingly, yeah. I may I take a call. And all things considered, when I mean all things considered, there's a lot of factors that go into, you know, saying yes. Mm. Uh, one has to do, one has to make some compromises sometimes. You know, when one has to pay the bills. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So uh, it's it's uh, there is no hard and fast rule. Because you know. I was going to say, you could have like an amazing script, but have a really shit director, then you're fucked. Or you can have a really good director and a shit script, and you're fucked. Or you've got yeah. bad marketing, and you're fucked. It's just like... Absolutely. And you could have a great script and bad actors, and get fucked. And, and <laughs> the other thing that I was going to... Like, so there was... The, my experience in film is, is very limited. Like, I did a couple of, you know, soundtracks. I've been a music supervisor. I was in... Oh, in fact, we might have a mutual colleague. I've just realized. Apurva... Did she work on Delhi Crime as well? Yes, she was a producer. So she worked on, she produced What Are the Odds, which I'm in. Ah. I have a cameo yeah. in this film. And I'm just like, okay, that's, that's, our, that's our work, work oh, connect. Yeah, she's she amazing. Was she was online. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. She's awesome. But the thing that, that, you know, letting go of the product, right, was like, you know, like I said about nerves and all those kinds of things. Um, the thing about cinema and acting that, 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 that completely through me and gave me a greater respect for actors is the ability to let go of your performance, which is fucking terrifying for a control freak like me. Like, you know, there's a certain image you have in your head. There's a certain way that you want your character and you to look, but it's not you, it's the character. So you kind of have to trick yourself into not giving a shit. Um, but then it's left up to the editor. It's left up to the, the photographer. Oh, yeah. It's left up to so many different factors that you can't... It's several. You, no, no, you're just... See, it's the only... It's one of... That's one of the reasons why I like theater because I'm totally in control. When I'm right. Stage. And it's instant yeah. gratification, right? Because the audience yeah, is there, you do it. Yeah. In cinema, you have absolute, an actor has no control. You might have the finest performance, just depends on how the, the, guy, the director has shot it, what angle he has shot it, what mm -hmm. lensing he has shot it with. And then it also depends on the editor, how much of it is cut, which side. It, there are so many factors. It's a director's medium. Right? The directors are completely in control. Yeah. The actor is not in control in cinema. Yeah. It's, 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 it's quite something. I, yeah. I had like, and, and also the fucking waiting around. Ah, oh, just the amount of waiting you, you guys, like <laughs> actors have to do. Drive, uh, it just drove yeah. me mad. I couldn't deal with it. it. That's, yeah, so many actors say that. No, it's not, uh, uh, it's not the acting that is difficult. It's the waiting. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, there was just times yeah. when I was sat on, I mean, I, I got like, what are the odds was great. Um, and it was obviously a very, very, very organized set. And it was, it was still an indie film. But um, I kind of sneaked a hip flask on set and just drank my way through it because I was like, this is fucking boring. I'm just so, I need instant gratification. I'm yeah. one of those, you know, those. And, and, and let me tell you, one of the most dangerous places on earth while that waiting happens is your vanity man. man. The most dangerous place. Yeah. Because you can go spiral and you can go into, you know, very, very dark spaces. Yeah, sitting there waiting and depends on the character you're playing. <laughs> that's another, another, you know, that's yeah. the other point is that like, how do you exorcise your character after a show? So like, you know, you, you mentioned, and I, I was talking to Riz about this as well, because I was just, after we finished shooting on What Are The Odds, I was just like, how the fuck do you do? No, what do you do? And he's very like, you know, he gave me a very, very diplomatic answer. It's like, I sit there and, you know, it's an opportunity to, 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 um, 
to know your character more. So he's very fucking like focused. Yeah, he's but just this, like, this, this doesn't happen to me as much mm. in a film as it happens on stage. Right. When you go on stage and you have a great show and you're, you were a rush, yeah. coming down after that is a bit, takes a bit. That, yeah. that, that, from live because performance, then, I can, I can equate to that. in character for over three hours. Mm. Around two and a half to three hours. You're, you're, you're staying in character. Mm. Yeah. And you also got the charge of going on stage and you've got the, that dynamic happening between you and the audience. Yeah. Yeah. And the, so after the stage performance, it's far more, it, it takes a longer time. Really? Because I, I yeah. would imagine that the gratification would be there. And as you say, you're in character for three hours, but... I would imagine that if you're, you know, you shoot a scene, you've got a, you've got a staying, or you know, some actors stay in character while they're resetting all the lights and the angles and everything, and then so they're in character for much longer, but only expressing as that character for snippets at a time. Yeah. And I, yeah, and, yeah. and I imagine that is a whole other discipline that I can't get my head around. Um, whereas yeah, with theatre, that yeah, that's method. Hmm. What what they call method school, method method acting, where you stay in it. Hmm. Yeah, that's another way of doing it. Do you find you, so it's easier for you to sort of just slip in and slip out on a film uh, set? Yeah, but no, it depends on what you're doing. It, you know, it depends on the part. Mm. Depends on the part and depends on what you're doing. It just, the whole process changes from part to part. There is no, uh, there are as and as, you know, there are, there are as many processes as there are actors. Yeah. Mm. You know, each person's mind works differently. So... That's awesome that you're able to, um, to be so malleable with your approach. Hi, Ramona. How are you? Um, Ramona. Yeah, I mean, like that's, I, I just find that fascinating because I, I think that one thing about getting, you know, an experience in any creative medium is knowing how to do things. That's half the fucking battle, right? Is just effectively doing things um, mm. with the least amount of effort, you know, like getting more fucking... Uh, efficient at it so it doesn't like rip you yeah. in half but when you said like that the, you know that the trailer or the vanity vans are the most dangerous spaces to spiral um what yeah. do you mean by that like between those takes and because stuff? you're alone yeah you're alone there you know and uh, you you just start traveling sometimes and traveling into dark spaces when you're working Mm. In relation to the character, or why the fuck you're in waiting around for In relation to the so character, long. it could right. be sometimes in relation to the character. Yeah. Sometimes it could just be other factors. <laughs> I mean, that's you're that's. Alone. And you're, <laughs> you're at your most vulnerable period when you're acting. You know, it's like an actor is well, basically what you're doing is that you're just coming out nanga. You're mm. naked. Mm. Yeah. The more naked you are, the more you are appreciated. Naked, I mean, by your your whole emotions and your your your. You're, you're sort of exposing yourself, yeah. Mm. And, I, and, but yeah, sorry. Yeah, so so it's uh, sometimes it can be terrifying. Mm. Yeah, and you know you have to do it. Yeah. I think the, the the other the other kind of thing that um, that affected me particularly was just like you know. There's this glamorous idea of being a DJ on tour, for example. It's like, yeah, you know, you go to other countries, you play massive gigs and you have a great, you know, great time. But it's the crippling isolation when you're like, you're dealing with all that emotional high and then the low and all those yeah. things. And, and when I was on set, I was like, fuck, this is such a shit life. It looks so glamorous from the other side, but that isolation aspect is just so shit. Like, ah. And then you have to wait for the gratification to see the fucking thing eventually come out. Yeah, yeah. It's it's That's, just you you've got to be really fucking robust to want to be an actor. I I like my respect for actors has just gone through the roof now. I'm just like, wow, this is the existence. It's amazing. Yeah, it's as easy as it is difficult. Yeah, Gibbons, you know, it's a, I believe in this. I believe in it's part of my my whole belief system actually. I I uh, everything it's I call it the essential paradox. Mm. Everything is as much as it is not. <laughs> it's just you know it's just like being an, being an artist and having to be um simultaneously an arrogant prick and self-assured and also crushed with self-doubt simultaneously <laughs> like is this good enough is this shit oh fuck it's oh it's amazing oh no it's shit oh it's amazing oh it's shit it's the yeah. same thing yeah 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 it's that is a part of it that is part of the game
Well, yeah. I'm glad to know yeah. I'm not you, alone you, in that. Because you, 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 and, and, and I'll tell you, it is important to be vulnerable and be like that. It is important. Yeah. From there comes truth to a great level. Yeah. It was, it was interesting that, that in, in, this, in this film, uh, in What Are the Odds, which Apurva also produced, um, that there's this one scene where I wasn't acting, where I was just being, like literally I was sort of just communicating normally and that's the, that's the pickup they used. Because when I tried to act, it was shit. It was just fucking terrible. But as soon as I was just being normal and natural, it was fine. Yeah. And, and that kind of letting go aspect of it is like sort of... Yeah. I imagine the same sort of thing in any creative profession where you just get out of your own way and let the stuff breathe. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to do that, yeah. But that's what it is. That, what is the difference? If you look at people in real life and in normal life, yeah, observe them, they're all the best actors possible. Hmm. They're the best. Just observe them. They're fabulous actors. You see anybody. Yeah, right? You go to a shopkeeper who's trying to sell you something or anything, a salesman or any, even in a train when you're traveling, you just observe people. And the way they are, they have acquired certain skills and they, it's part of them and they're wonderful at it. Yeah. What makes it, what, what makes an actor different is that you have to replicate that same thing to order. Hmm. To order. Yeah. Being creative on demand like this, like turn on this demand. shit on. Yeah. yeah, turn this shit on now. And within a context that you're given. Yeah. You know, there's this, there's this one parallel that I wanted to ask actually that comes to mind is that when I'm DJing or producing a track, I'm like, it's almost like emotional programming. I'm like, I want to feel this emotion or transmit this emotion. Um, and that's, yeah. that's kind of how I think about things. It's almost like a program of like, if I know that this certain sound will cause the, your whole feeling to rise and rush and then a release. And right. in some ways, I always looked at acting as kind of programming yourself to react to certain things. So you use emotions to, to get a reaction out yeah. of you. Yeah. Now, that is, that is what you call craft. Just as you know, that if you play this sound, it will evoke this emotion. Mm. Similarly, actors know that if they do this, it will communicate this. Yeah, that's craft. And your whole fucking body is your instrument. Yeah, and your whole body is your instrument. That's exactly. fucked up. That is Every so fucking... fucked up because you can't hide behind anything. You're yeah, fucked. Yeah, your whole body is your instrument. Yeah. 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 So that's craft. Mm. But you can take craft to a point where eventually you have to, you can have your craft right under your belt, but then eventually it's all emotion. You have to put then there is also craft in bringing about emotion. And do you use that, like, sort of mental triggers to bring about a reaction? From oh, yeah, yeah, you do. It's, yeah, what they call in the method school, emotional memory. Yeah, yeah, you connect it with certain things in your life. Yeah. That's, it, it sounds like a hell of a task. And also, like, when I was talking about exercising a character, I think there's got to be a bunch of... Um, perhaps work you have to do to find you again after a big role that's all absorbing? Uh, after a while, it, it's not very difficult. Okay. Yeah, after a while, it's not very difficult. You, you learn to just, uh, you know, switch uh, back easily. Yeah. It just depends on how much you have immersed yourself and what duration you have immersed yourself. Yeah. 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 Shit. That's it's quite intense. But look, man, uh, before we before we say goodbye, because I realise I've been I've been holding you for over an hour now. Um, is there anything coming up that you yeah, can talk we, about? Oh, uh, right now, man. Yeah, I've got about three, four films to be released. One is called Penthouse. One is um, well, based on the famous magazine. Pen no, <laughs> no, not really. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's actually a remake of a of a film which is on Netflix called The Loft. It's an amazing uh, whodunit. Uh, yeah, and uh, then there's another film called Ezra, which is a horror story. Oh, stories. someone in the comments was asking about an update on Ezra, actually. Yeah, it's ready and it's going to be released soon. Yeah, we finished. Um, uh, it's in the process of uh, going to be released. Nice. Yeah, the shooting's complete, the principal photography's completed, editing is completed. Yeah. Wicked. So there's Ezra, 
And then there's um, Penthouse. Yeah, these two films, I'm just looking forward to them. So what, you know, I've, just, I've just seen Penthouse on your IMDb page. I'm interested about this because it's got a very salacious title. <laughs> and the first word is a debauchery-filled gathering. Mate, fuck off. It's blatantly based on the magazine. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, no, okay, then it's a murder mystery. I, t- I yeah, see, yeah, I yeah. see, yeah. I see. Okay, yeah. fine. So it's not based on that at all. Yeah, yeah, no such luck. <laughs> Shit. Well, look, bro, I can't wait to do this in real life soon. Like, I, I oh, was... there's another film which I, uh, 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 my, my wife is just reminding me. It's called Bell Bottom. Bell Bottom. Yeah. And that, Again, uh, based on a magazine? Not, 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 not really. It's based on a true story on a hijacking. Oh, wow. Hang on. I've just, I've just yeah, seen that. Yeah. That looks kind of cool, actually. Yeah, yeah. And that's huh. an interesting, which I was in England for shooting. Is that when you were last here? When we failed to yeah. meet up? We completely yeah. failed to meet up. Because you were in fucking I'm, West I'm, London and I was yeah. stuck in Shoreditch. Yep, yep. Right. That's what it is. Gee. Is this, is, is this going to be the typical sort of Indian cinematic London where a plane lands, they get off the plane, and then suddenly it cuts to Piccadilly Circus, which is... <laughs> I won't say much about it, but it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting hijack story, which really happened. Hmm. It's around the mid eighties. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Ishan. Bell bottom. Awesome. October wait, hang on a second. When's it right coming out? Then. May twenty twenty one. Right, darling. I'm gonna go Google you some more. Thank you so much for joining me. No, no, um, thank you. I hope it was uh, yeah, yeah. It was riveting. I and I'm sorry for the delay, um, but I can't wait to do this in real life. I really can't. I want to fucking get back once all this shit calms down, and then we can go and get yeah. mash up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But keep your chin up. Of your course. Nose up above the shit. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, There's you want. Of... Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I've got to work out what that actually means. But yeah, big love. <laughs> we will catch yeah. up very, very soon. I hope. Yeah, lovely to see you, Crank. Yeah. Mwah. And uh, yeah, Gavin. Good to see you too. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and people are just coming in. Like, looks like right now. Oh well, there you go. It's Lovely a constant. It's, Mary. it's the it's the constant cycle of Instagram. It just it's uh, a yeah. it's a very uh, what's the word? It's got a high turnover. That's probably what it is. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But look, big love, brother. Thank you so much. And uh, once yeah, again, yeah, I can't wait yeah. to get fucked up with you. It's gonna be great. Big love on him as well. Calling you. Mwah. Yeah. Bye. See you now. Thank you. Mwah.